So here we are, we are in 3.2, um, which is called uh, mix it up cubes. Um, so first they're gonna remind you of what X squared domain range X intercept and Y intercepts are. So really quickly, if you forgot what domain is, domain is your X values, okay? Domain means X values versus your range is your Y values, okay? So when I tell you about your domain, you're supposed to look from left to right. And then for your um, Y values, you're supposed to look from bottom to top. Okay, so if you imagine what X squared looks like, right? So here goes really quickly. Um, when I look at X squared, when you look at this, when you look from left to right, you're like, where are the values not? And some of you are thinking like, oh, right here, Ms. Johnson. But so when anything goes outside of this window, you could then assume that it's going to continue in that fashion like this. Just because it ends here doesn't mean it ends here, right? So it's just going to continue all the way up through my screen and probably outside of my monitor and stuff like that. So from left to right, I could assume there's every single value. So you can say, Ms. Johnson, so my domain is all real numbers? Yes. Now your range on the other hand, when I said, look from bottom to top. Now look at this, from the bottom, there's nobody here, no one lives here. And then it starts right here and then it goes all the way up. So it starts at zero, Miss Johnson, and goes all the way up, yes. Okay, and that should be like, huh, I wonder if that has anything to do with the fact that it's X is being squared. And that's exactly it. The That's exactly a good question to think, okay. Moving forward, um, really quickly, you should remember what this plus three does to your parabola. So you have this generic parabola here. What does this plus three do to this equation? What does this plus three do to this equation? Someone tell me in the chat. In the chat, yes, it moves it up three. Very good, it moves it up three. Um, very good. Okay, so when it moves up three, right? You know this because it's outside of the function, right? Versus say like this guy. This guy doesn't move it up there, but Miss Johnson, it's still plus three. And I'm like, okay, who cares? This plus three is very different than this plus three. It matters where you put it, right? Like if I take my left shoe and I put it on my right foot, I'll be like, look, I'm wearing my shoes. And you would all be like, yeah, but it's not right, Miss Johnson. So it matters where you place it. This plus three says move up three. That's what you all told me. What does this plus three tell me to do? What does this plus three tell me to do? Yes, exactly. Very good. Someone's like left three. I'm not sure. Question mark. Yes, exactly. Left three. It moves it left three. And some of you like laugh at me because you're like, Ms. Johnson, you're the one who told us, remember you live in backwards land and blah, blah, blah. Yes, X lives in backwards land. So when you see plus three, your brain says, oh, move to the right three. But X lives in backwards land. Kind of like how you guys used to live before. Um, like everything is opposite day. And then you should all know what this does now. You should be familiar. This does, what does this guy do? What does this negative do? What does this negative do? Yeah, he opens up down, exactly. So, so when he opens up down, I'm gonna use a different word from now on. It actually reflects it down. It reflects it down. So no longer is he the happy face that he used to be. He is now the sad face, right? Do you see that if I drew better, do you guys all see the reflection? This looks, this looks like this. Yes, very good, okay. So moving on to our lesson, um, today you will be able to compare quadratic and cubic functions, um, graph a cubic function, and what are the similarities and differences between quadratic functions and cubic functions? Okay, so because of the way we've been talking about functions, my hope is that today the only new part is what the cubic function actually looks like. Because all these things you talked about here, up three, here, left three, here, reflecting down right three, oh, sorry, right one up two are all the same here. It's all the same. So 
that's why I took a lot of time to make sure that you understood how to do these transformations, because now you're just going to apply it to cubics. And then this lesson becomes a really quick lesson. Okay. So moving on. So previously we learned the function generated by the sum of the terms as a quadratic sequence is called a cubic function. Linear functions, quadratic functions, and cubic functions are all polynomials. Say that word out loud with me, polynomial. So poly means many, nomials means terms. So poly means many terms, okay? Which also includes functions of higher powers. So cubes, squares, and so on. In this lesson, actually, even to the fourth and to the 10th, if you wanted. In this lesson, we will explore more about cubic functions to learn about the similarities and differences between cubics and quadratics. So to begin, let's look at the most basic cubic function, x cubed. Um, a, it is technically a degree polynomial because the highest exponent is three. Sorry, this is supposed to be a three, but it's called a cubic function because the functions are often used to model volume. Okay, so any polynomial that I say, this polynomial is a degree five. It means this little exponent guy is a five. The highest exponent is a five. Okay. Similarly, similarly, quadratic functions are degree polynomials because they're called quadratic after the Latin word for square. Scott, um, if you think about the Spanish word for square, very similar, right? Scott's March motivation showed that the linear functions have a constant rate of change, quadratic functions have a linear rate of change, and cubic functions have a quadratic rate of change, right? So really quick, I just want to show you what they're talking about because that was a lot of words. If you go back over here, remember to our notes, and we talked about this here, this little chart here, this is what I'm talking about. Because this wasn't the same, then we knew it wasn't linear. Because this wasn't the same, we knew it wasn't quadratic. Because this was the same, we knew it was cubic. What they're saying here is, in, in this slide here, it says, what does it say? The cubic functions have a quadratic rate of change. So if you look at this last set of numbers here and you found the rule, which is right here, this guy here is quadratic. This guy here is linear. Sorry, this guy here is linear. This guy here is linear. So the quadratic change here implies that this is cubic. I said this wrong. I want to say it again. Because this is quadratic, this is cubic. Because this, oh, I'm going to scroll back up here. Because this is linear. See how these change by plus two, plus two, plus two? Because this is linear, this guy's quadratic. And if you looked one more time at this guy here, right here, this is plus two, plus two, plus, because this was a constant, then this is linear. Your rate of change is always minus one down from your function. Okay, minus one down. All right, let's move on. Um, Okay, so then we get to this part here and it's like, hey, can you verify that X cubed has a quadratic rate of change? So this question, a lot of you asked, and so I just wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So we are doing this problem right here. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is I just wanna insert a table right here um, and just go like this. And it says x cubed. So here's x, here's x to the third. And they're asking you, can you verify that it has a quadratic rate of change? So the very first thing, okay. For the very first thing I wanna do is I just wanna put in a bunch of numbers. Um, I'm not limited to positive numbers, but I'm just gonna use these numbers just so it's easier for me to calculate in my head. Two cubed is eight, three cubed is 27, and four cubed I believe is 64. Okay, when I build this table, here's my table, here it is. Um, when I build this table, I am now looking for the differences. So here, this is seven, here, this is 19, and here, this is uh, a lot, 37, is that right? 37. Can someone check my math really quick? Can you make sure that this is 37? Okay, 
So the next thing that I want to do is I want to see if this is quadratic. So one of the ways that you could do that is actually find a function for this. Another way to do this is just to keep subtracting. So I'm going to subtract these two. Um, and then now it looks like I need another row. So I'm going to build another row really quick. Um, table, insert below. Um, five, I believe, is 125. Can someone do the math for me? 125 minus 64. I think it's one. So one is 60 something. 61. It's 61. I need to figure it out. All right, this is 61. All right, so here, this difference, I'm going to do my differences. This is 12. This is 18. Shoot. This is 40 would be 21, 24. You guys all see this? You guys all with me? Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then here, here, yeah, it's still not linear. Jeez, I'm looking for the constants, right? And then I'm going to do one more row. And this is six and this is six. I'm like, yeah, yeah, hey, you guys, look, we found it. We found the constants. Okay. So if, because this first set, second set, third set, because my final third set is a constant six and six, that means that it's a cubic. That means this is a cubic. You can actually find the rule for this, meaning n squared plus whatever, um, to prove that it's quadratic. But another way to prove that it's um, that it is a cubic is this way, finding your sets of difference. So yeah, this is cubic. See, because your first, if your first set of difference is the same, then it's a linear x to the first. So just think this, like pretend this is x to the first, x squared and x cubed, right? So just pretend. Okay. Then they wanted you to graph it, which I think most of you graphed it, and that's fine. Um, this is where we're actually going to continue next time is figuring out what this actually looks like. Like, what does the intercepts look like? That's relatively easy to find using your um, calculator. Intervals of increase and decrease, I think I might have to remind you guys of, but the domain and range you should be comfortable with, okay? All right, so because this third set of differences is exactly the same, it's cubic. So this is the way my brain thinks. It's like x to the first, if it's the first differences, that's linear. x squared, if the second set of differences are the same. And because the third set of differences are the same, that must mean it's x cubed. Okay, 